satisfying. All right, so we did nine, right? But I said I would go back to 10? Yeah. Yes, okay. So let's see how well we do. All right, so what would you do for 10? Good. All right, so this is the same thing. If I had moved this one on the side with the secant, this would be tangent squared x. How about sine squared minus one? Good, negative cosine squared of x. So the one came over with the sine, which means the cosine had to go to the other side, which makes it negative. Okay, then what? <laughs> I mean, it's bound to get, as we go through the days, you're bound to get more comfortable. Hopefully, that's the goal. All right, then we did 11. Yeah, right. Okay. We didn't do nine. I was going to say, I thought we didn't do another one. Oh, because number nine was... We didn't do nine? Um, we did nine, we did eight. Oh, okay. I was going to say, I thought we did that one. Oh, because eight was like seven. Okay. I'm going to let you do this one. Because now that we... And if you need a reference, go back to seven. Okay? So you do eight and see how far you get. All right. Not sure this is the only way to do it, but this is kind of like the way we did the example from yesterday. So when they have different denominators, you want to give them the like denominator. So we multiplied each one by the opposite denominator. 1 plus cosine plus 1 minus cosine over 1 minus cosine times 1 plus cosine. The cosines in the numerator cancel out. You get 2 over 1 minus cosine squared if you FOIL that out. And then that is sine squared, which is one of your Pythagorean identities. And then if you bring sine squared to the top, it becomes its reciprocal, which is cosecant squared. How many of you got it? The rest of you close? I did it differently. How'd you do it? Uh, I ended on 2 over sine squared x equals 2 over sine squared x. Oh, like you broke down the left side too? Okay, that's fine. All right, then we did the other ones on this one, right? We left off here. All right, so 12 says tan of x plus cotangent of x equals secant of x times cosecant of x. So what's more complicated, like a, a sum or a different, I mean a sum or a product? The sum. So I would say to start working on that side. And because the right side has secant and cosecant, I know I want to eventually get to terms of like sine and cosine, I would avoid the one over, co of t one over tangent and try to go there. I would get these into their sines and cosines. So what is tan in terms of sine and cosine? Sine over cosine. And then cotangent would be what? Cosine over sine. And then different denominators, right? We're going to get them together. So we're going to multiply by the other one's denominator. So this would be times sine, and this would be times cosine. I'd get sine squared x plus cosine squared x all over cosine x times sine of x. Then what? What's sine squared plus cosine squared? One. One over cosine x times sine of x. I can either split these into two separate fractions, they'd both get one over them, or I can simply move these so the numerators, this, making them their reciprocal. So the reciprocal of cosine is secant. Reciprocal of sine is cosecant.
This with pleasure. Yeah. I don't understand what you did when you multiplied the cosine and the sine in like the first step. So to get a least common denominator here because they're different, it would be the product of them both. It would be cosine times sine. Oh, so like the same thing you did in the last one? Yep, so then whatever's missing from the bottom, you want to multiply the numerator by. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. All right, you do th actually do the rest of these and see how far you can get. Because sine, you have you have sine squared plus cosine squared. Yeah. That's one. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you put it sorry into cosine over sine. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Good. How about 14? I'll randomly pick somebody from home. Let's make this fun. Give me a number 1 through 13. Eight. Oh, never mind. <laughs> Nate. Nate, you want to start it for us? I put one over sine of x. Okay. Minus sine of x over one. Okay. And then I um, did a common denominator, which is sine of x. So then like, I multiplied like sine of x by sine of x, and I got um, sine of x squared over, over sine of x. Okay. And then the other side, I need cosine of x over 1. Okay. Times cosine of x over sine of x. Okay. And then for that side, you should get cosine of squared x over sine of x. Okay. And then 1 minus sine squared of x is cosine squared of x. Good and job. then over sine of x and equal to. Good job. Did anybody do it differently? Did anybody not work on the right side? I did it. Okay. How'd you do it? Um, I just did. So you were here, you were here. And then I just turned that into cosine squared of x over sine of x. Okay. And then I did, like took out one of the cosines of x's. Okay. And then you should get cosine of x times cosine, yeah. And then the cosine of x over sine of x turns into cotangent, so you just get cosine of x times cotangent of x equals cosine of x. Good. Both full points. Good job. All right, uh, Nate, pick a number one through thirteen. Don't pick eight. Um, four. Isabella, you want to take a stab at fifteen? Mhm. Mm Fifteen's not easy. I give you that. <laughs> so Isabella, you remember yesterday I taught you how you could get rid of a denominator by multiplying by its opposite? Isabella. Sorry, um, That's okay. I did uh, secant x as uh, 1 over cosine. Okay, so you worked left side. Okay, 1 over cosine. And then tangent x is sine x over cosine x. Okay. And then sine x over sine x is 
Okay. And then I flipped it, so then the 1 minus the sine x is on the bottom. So you can't move when there's an expression. If you have a 1 plus or a 1 minus or any, anything where it's added or subtracted, you can't move them. You can only move, like I could only move cosine that way. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, so you can only, good job getting that far, but you could only move if it's a single function or it's something that's being multiplied by another thing. So let's just say you got to this point, right? I'll say right here. You're kind of at a dead end on the left side, but I'll show you that there's something, that, there's another trick that you can do that if you had gotten to this point, I would probably have tried to do. And that is, if you bring this down and you have two fractions on either side of the equal sign, let's just say this was like an X over three equals five over nine. How would you solve for X in that top one? Like any kind of proportion like that. How could you solve? It's a, it's a five. You can cross multiply, right? Same rules apply with these, it's just that they're expressions. So because I have one fraction on either side of the equal sign, I can actually cross multiply these. So I would get one plus sine of x times one minus sine of x equals cosine squared of x. And then what happens with one plus sine and one minus sine? It's different two squares, right? One minus sine squared of x. Don't be, because I wouldn't have done it this way. So, but would this always This can work, yeah. And then 1 minus sine squared of x becomes cosine squared of x. So just because you started that way, I would have said that that would be how I would have done it. But I probably would have started, if I hadn't started on that way, with the right side. So yesterday, remember we said that you can get rid of a sum or a difference in the denominator by multiplying by its opposite. So if I multiply both the top and the bottom by one plus sine of x, then my numerator I would distribute, I'd get cosine of x plus cosine of x sine of x. And then the denominator becomes one minus sine squared x. And that is cosine of x. Over cosine squared x. And then you can actually, because there's a cosine in each one, you could cancel out one of the cosines. So you didn't even have to distribute here. I could have kept it like this. And then one of the cosines would cancel and I'd end up with one plus sine of x over cosine of x. That would come from that or on the left. And then obviously I still have to get it to seek it in tangent. But if I take that numerator and I split it into two parts, both parts get the denominator. This would be one over cosine of x plus sine of x over cosine of x which becomes secant of x plus tangent of x. Now it equals the left side. Uh, so for the cross multiplying thing, can you only do it if like there's a one plus? No, you could do it anytime. There's two, if there's a fraction on the left and a fraction on the right, even if there's a fraction on the left and you make the right over one, you could always do it. Oh. Yeah. So you can only do that if it's squared. If it was one plus cosecant squared of x, then you could do it, but it's not squared. So instead of doing that one, try to do the top. Like how could I use that same 
right? So cotangent squared plus one equals cosecant squared. Try changing the top since the top is squared. So you're on the right track, just the wrong part. Uh, would you do cosecant squared minus one? Yep. Then what? Um, I'm not really sure. I didn't like, I like skipped over this one. Okay. So think about that the top one would be a uh, difference of two squares, right? Yeah. So could you factor it? Yeah. How would it factor? Um, we would do cosecant x minus 1 and cosecant x plus 1. Good. Why do I keep losing the second C? Okay. So then now look at your denominator with this, right? So cosecant x plus 1, cosecant x minus 1 over, oh, I did two minuses, 1 to plus, 1 plus cosecant x, right? Now mm -hmm. you could cancel that plus 1, right? Yeah. You can't split a bottom. Yeah, like, but as in the top, like, how do you know it's split it or if it's like that, just put it as, like, cotangent squared. So, I mean, because cotangent and cosecant are both in the same Pythagorean identity, I would try to see if I could do something with that. Okay. That's what makes me do that top. It doesn't mean it's the only way to do it, though. And I'm not, I'm not done. I haven't even reached the right side, right? Yeah, but there's nothing else you're going to be able to do with this. You can make it one over sine. I mean, you could, I could keep working. So I'll give you two options. I can make this one over sine of X minus one. And then I'd have to give that a like denominator. So it'd be one over sine of X minus sine of X over sine of X. And then I get one minus sine of X over sine of X. The other way would be to work with the right side. So like once you get here, set that equal to one minus sine of X, and then you can actually split the right side. So it'd be one over sine of X minus sine of X over sine of X, which becomes cosecant X minus one. So remember there's more than one way to do these as long as the steps that get you to the right answer at the bottom are right, you're good. All right, how about step? So Natalie, pick, I don't even remember what number you are. Pick one through, pick one through 19, Natalie. Let's, she was 13. Are you 11. 11. Okay, Ethan. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, Ethan Mirabal, sorry. Do you want to start us off on 17? Sure. On the, in the black or in the red? So I once I gave, I made it one, right? And I wanted these to have a like denominator. So I'd multiply by sine and sine. Okay, Ethan, where would you start? Well, first I'd start looking at that cosine X that's in the denominator, maybe turn that into secant. Okay, so you're going to bring this to the top, you mean? Yeah, bring it to the top, multiply it by the cosine of x, make it 1 minus cosine of x, secant of x. Okay. Hmm. Then this is where I don't necessarily know where to continue. Okay, so let's say you distribute this, right? So let's say we do that, secant of x minus cosine of x, secant of x. What happens with cosecant of x times secant of x? That could be secant of x. Oh, that's one. Good. Because this would secant be one over cosine. That equals tangent squared, right? 
So it's not squared, it's no, only, not squared yet. yeah. And that's honestly, it's probably one of the most common mistakes. So I would say on the right hand side, we're almost at a dead end. So maybe look at the left hand side and think about that you just thought, you just thought about tangent secant, right? So tangent squared of x plus one equals secant squared of x. Yeah. So I can't change the bottom because the bottom's not squared, but I can change the top, right? Tangent can get replaced with what? Secant plus one. Good. So if no, I did yeah. secant minus one, right? Secant squared x minus one over one plus secant of x. And then similarly, similarly, that's the hardest word on the planet for me to say, like, Nat like Natalie just did, what could I do with the top there? Could you cross off the, uh, could you round the secants so that instead of secant squared x and over secant x, could you just cross off one secant and get secant of x minus one? So I can't cross through them because it's not, like it's, a, it's part of a sum or difference, you can't cross part of it, but you can factor the top, right? Those are the difference of two squares again. So I can make it secant of x plus one and secant of x minus one. And then the plus ones cancel and I get secant of x minus one equals secant of x minus one. I did that. Yeah, which you can. How'd you do it? <laughs> you split it like you did secant squared of x minus 1 over that whole denominator? No, I did everything up to, like, I got the secant squared of x, or secant x minus 1, but I kept the right side the same. Okay. And I put, I just, like, put 1 over cosine x minus 1 because you're, like, multiplying. Okay. 1 over cosine minus cosine over cosine, so you did secant minus 1 yeah. on the right. On the right, I just kept the right the same. Oh, I got you. So I would say the other way that I, I would do it is multiply by the 1 minus secant here. And then you'd get 1 minus secant squared of x, which is tangent. No, it's the, it's ne it would be the other way around. 1 minus secant. That would be tan squared. And then you'd get tan squared over tan squared. And then you'd have to break up the other side. So you'd have to multiply it by this. Yeah, here, walk me through it. So you did. So I did everything you did except, like, I kept the right side the same. On the left side. I so on the left side, are you at secant squared x minus 1 over 1 plus secant of x? No, on the left side, or, yeah. Then you factored it? Yeah, and I split it up, and then I crossed out the 1 plus okay. secant of x, and then I was left with secant x minus 1. And I turned the secant of x into 1 over cosine okay. of x, and then I multiplied negative 1 by cosine of x over cosine of x, and then combined it into 1 minus cosine of x over cosine of x. That works. The other side. Yeah. <laughs> What's that? All right, 18. What could we start with? First of all, are you going to start with the left or the right? The right. The left, there's not much to do there, right? But if you look at the right, what do both of those terms have? And specifically, what kind of squared? Like they both have a tangent squared, right? <laughs> a two. A two it does count as a squared. It's a very open-ended question. I guess it could be answered that way. They both have a tangent squared, right? So if I take out the tangent squared x, I end up with secant squared x minus 1. Do we see that? Sometimes factoring makes it the easiest. What is secant squared x minus 1? Tangent squared. Yep, so I get tangent squared x times tangent squared x, which is tan to the fourth x.
Miss Grace Weiser? Yeah. Um, like tangent squared x minus tangent squared x, wouldn't that cancel No, not my, it's not minus, it's times. Oh, okay, okay, never mind. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, we'll go on day three of finishing the same set of notes tomorrow. Okay, and I'll give you some more practice to do tomorrow, but for tonight, take a brain break. Get to know your Pythagorean identities, okay? Like, for the love of God, if you don't know those quickly, it's going to take you so much longer to do this, okay? That whole reference sheet. What'd you say? No homework. Like, like.